Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to compare the network multiplayer functionality of both Unity and Unreal. I'll show how you can synchronize the position of objects over the network and also share variables between clients. Let's first take a look at my Unity project and see what was needed for network support. I created a 3D URP project, but you can use network multiplayer with any of the templates. And after I created the project, I went to the package manager window and I added the netcode for game objects package. This is one of many different network multiplayer packages for Unity. It's the one I selected, but you have other options like Mirror or Photon or a few others. So scrolling down in my package list, you can see netcode for game objects here and the version that I have added. After that package was added, I created a network manager game object and attached the network manager script to it. This has a few different configuration options, uh, the first of which is the transport, and that's going to define how you're communicating over the network. The Unity transport is the default one, and that will allow me to test locally with this IP address and port. But you can configure other types of transports if you'd like to communicate over a service like Steam, for instance. The other main configuration step for the network manager is to select a player prefab. And this is a prefab that has a network object component on it. And this will spawn a new player every time someone connects. And when they disconnect, that instance will be destroyed by default. If I look into this prefab, it's just a cube and it has a network object component. I added a player script that allows me to move around a little bit and a rigid body. And I've also added this component called a client network transform. And what that lets me do is to synchronize the position, rotation, or scale of this object over the network. I've just elected to synchronize the position since I won't be changing the rotation or the scale for this demo. And this particular component derives from the network transform component, but what it adds is some client authority so if you want your player to have responsive controls and be responsible for their own movement, then you can use this script. Looking at the code for that component, you can see that all it does is override this on is server authoritative and returns false. I also have a network rigid body component attached here because I'm using a rigid body for movement. And finally, I have a player health script. So I'm going to demonstrate how you can synchronize a player's HP over the network so that all clients can see it. I'll go ahead and demonstrate what happens if you play this in the editor. By default, you don't see any player, but if I select the network manager object here, there are some buttons that I can use to start a host, a server, or a client. If I start a host, then I will also have a player assigned to me. If I start a server, that's a dedicated server, and then the client will connect to a server. So let's start a host. And when that happens, I see my player prefab has been instantiated. Now, you may want to configure where your player is spawned at, and there are options for that in this library. I can move around with WASD, and I have a little bit of text above my head here, which indicates my HP. If I touch this cube, I lose one HP. And in a moment, I'll demonstrate what happens when more than one client is connected. In order to test a Unity multiplayer game with more than one player, you have a couple options. The one that is referenced in the Unity documentation is something called Peril Sync, or Parallel Sync, depending on what line you read. And it has a method of copying the project so you can run it from two different editors. Now, I haven't tried this method yet, so I'm using a method where I build an exe and then just test that with my editor. In order to test an exe build along with my editor, I added an interface that has host and join buttons, like we saw in the network manager earlier. So over here on the left, I have my editor, and on the right, I have an exe build. I'll host from the exe, which spawns a player object. And then I will select the client button in the editor, which spawns another object. So when I have mouse focus here on the exe window, you can see that the character moves and then the movement is replicated over in the left here. If I switch my focus to the editor view, the same thing happens with the other character. 
And now if I touch this blue cube, I lose an HP and that's reflected on both screens. Let's try it with this one. And the same thing happens. Now let's take a look at the code for player movement and health. In this player script, I have movement code in the fixed update function, but I also have this conditional check to see if we're the local player or not. This will ensure that I'm only moving the player prefab that's associated with my client and its functionality that's provided by this network behavior base class. Over in the player health script, you can see that it also derives from network behavior and I have a variable called HP. Now this is a network variable, which is an integer and it has a delegate related to when the value changes. So I've set up that delegate with this method called HP changed and I can get the previous value and then the new value that that integer is set to. And then I can perform some actions on all clients whenever this value is changed. So here I make the player red by changing its material. And then here I change the value of the HP text that is hovering above the player's head. Now this method will be called on all clients whenever I change the value of HP. And you can see down here that when I collide with something, I check to see if it's a hazard. And if it is, then I call a server RPC or remote procedure call. Now the reason that I'm calling a server RPC is that by default, only the server is allowed to modify the value of a network variable. So I call that with a value of one. So I just take one damage and then I subtract that from the value of my HP. Now, when I run this line, then that will trigger the delegate here and this will get called. So that demonstrates the basics of how unity communicates over the network through the use of network transform components, remote procedure calls and network variables. Now let's take a look at how unreal does it. I created an Unreal project using the third-person template, which gives me some sample level elements and humanoid characters to use. If I press play, I can move my character around with mouse and WASD. I've also added a health bar above the character's head, which I'll get into shortly. And just like in the Unity tutorial, I've scattered around some hazards here in the level when I interact with them. You can see that the character turns red and loses some HP. In order to test with more than one player, I duplicated the player's start actor and modified its position. The other thing I need to do is here near the play button, there's this uh, menu item and I can select the number of players. I'm going to increase that to two. And now I'll try to play. And you can see that another character is spawned. Unreal also opened up a secondary window from the second player's perspective. So if I give mouse focus to that, I can move around as a secondary player. And you can see that my movements are replicated on the first player's window. Moving over to the hazards, you can see that when I interact with one, the player takes damage and the HP is reflected on both players' screens. The multiplayer documentation for Unreal Engine 5.3 outlines creating a C++ project. However, I wanted to give Blueprints a try, so I went that route instead. In order to edit the relevant blueprint, you can browse to All Content Third Person Blueprints and then double click on this third person blueprint here. Within that blueprint, over in the details section, there's a subsection on replication, which contains some configuration relevant to networking. In the center here is the third person characters event graph. And this is where you can configure functionality as you could in C++, but in a little more visual way. For instance, I have a node that says on component hit capsule component. This will be triggered when my character runs into something. And I can then check to see if the thing that it ran into was a hazard or not. This white line between nodes indicates the flow of execution. I can also take uh, an output from this node and feed it into the input of another node. So I can look at the other actor uh, that's not my character and then check to see if they have a tag named hazard, which I've defined similar to how I did in the Unity project. 
and this will return true or false depending on if that tag is present. Next up, I have a branch node which checks that Boolean condition, and if it's true, passes control on to this other node. There's nothing connected to the false label on this node, so nothing will happen in that case. If we did collide with a hazard, then we execute this sequence of steps. We have a variable called HP, which is of type integer. This is going to track the player's health. When I select it, over on the right, I can choose to either replicate it over the network or not. We get the value of the HP variable and feed it into this subtraction node, which takes off one HP, as it did in the Unity project. And then we go ahead and we set that back to the HP, but we also notify all clients that that's happened. I'm using a health bar instead of a number above the player's head, so I want to convert that HP integer into a percentage of health. So to do that, I have to cast the integer to a float, and there's a node for that as well. Then I divide by 10, which happens to be my character's maximum HP value. Now, this is represented as a constant here, but you may want a more extensible way of representing maximum health in a full project. Next up, I've created a function called update health bar. And this function can be accessed by double clicking here. It's also referenced over here. I won't get into this function in depth, but it changes the width of a progress bar within a widget and demonstrates that you can modularize functionality in blueprints. Back in my event graph, the next step is to change the tint on the player to a reddish hue. And the way that I do that is by setting a vector parameter on a material. And specifically, there is this parameter named tint on the player's mesh. And I can set it to 100 where this first number is the red component. Finally, I want to return the player to their original tint, and I do this through the use of a delay node. It takes the execution flow and waits for this number of seconds. Once that's completed, it passes control onto this node, which will reset the parameter value of tint. One other quick note, when play begins, I can use this event begin play node to execute code, and that will pass it on to this update health bar function that I had created, and I just initialize the health percentage to 100%. That demonstrates the basics of network multiplayer in Unreal, including position and rotation synchronization and networked variables. Overall, I'm impressed with how network multiplayer is baked into Unreal. I didn't need to add any supplemental packages, and testing with more than one player was very easy. Having never used Blueprints before, I was impressed with how intuitive it was, though I'm curious to see how it scales for larger projects, and I'd also like to see how versioning is handled. I could imagine a visual diff system that shows which nodes have been added, removed, or changed, but I'm not sure if something like that exists. I'm also not sure how a source control system like Git would handle changes to Blueprint functionality. If you know the answers to any of these questions, or if you'd like to tell me which system you prefer between Unreal or Unity, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.